Hi, in this video we will talk about registering images using features or landmarks. In previous videos we have seen methods in which we can find certain features in an image and search for those features in another one. Techniques like SIF can provide a set of points that we can use to identify interest points on two images. Then we can use that information to calculate the projection from one image to another. We saw this during the lecture on uncalibrated stereo when we use it to calculate the depth map. However, we can also use this information to register two images. The example at that time was about creating panoramas. The idea was to take two images and align them so we can fuse them to create a larger picture. But sometimes you just want to align the images to apply certain processing on a specific area. For example, when you want to read a QR code, usually you need to manually align the phone with the code so the phone can read it. But if you're in a rush and you just take a picture, the code could be distorted because it was taken from a different angle. Here, we could register our picture to a template to fix the geometry of the code, and then we can read it with no problem. In this particular case, the QR code has landmarks that help us to define the correspondence between images, in a similar way that SIF find corresponding points in two different scenes. So how do we solve this? The problem can be solved by homography or in other words, finding a transformation matrix that modifies a source image to register it to the destination image. Sometimes this will be a projection matrix, like in uncalibrated stereo, but sometimes it just can be an affine matrix, or even a rotation and translation. Whatever is the case, we can apply a general solution to the problem. We have our definition of homography, in which a point xy in the source image is equal to a point xy in the destination image multiplied by a 3 by 3 transformation matrix that we don't know. Remember that this matrix can encode several transformations, and we will find them all at once. So we can take this formula and rewrite it to find the coordinates in the destination image in this way. Then we rearrange the terms and then we can take it back to the matrix form in this way. This is convenient because the first part of the equation includes all the points in the image that we know. Remember that we will have these points from C or as in landmarks, but we know that they are corresponding points between images. More than eight points is a safe number. Then in the middle we have a vector of parameters, and all of this is equal to zero. This gives you a linear system of the form a h equal to zero that can be solved with constrained least squares where the constraint is that h squared is equal to 1. And an easy way to find h is to calculate the eigenvectors of a transpose a. Here, the eigenvector with the smallest eigenvalue is the vector that corresponds to the h that we are looking for. So then we can just reshape this vector into a 3 by 3 matrix, and we have our warping matrix. Now, there are some details to consider when we are warping images. We have our input image that we want to warp into the destination image. Then, if we apply the warping matrix directly to each pixel, we will find the new locations of each one. But now here there are three visible problems. First, the new location might not fall in an exact pixel. Second, if the warping is making the image larger, we will end up with holes in the image. And third, the bounding box of the new image might change 
because a new location can fall out of the bounds of the original image. The process to solve this problem is to take the four corners of the destination image and apply the warping matrix. This will tell us the size of the new image, so we can create an empty image based on those coordinates. Now we're going to loop over the new image and we are going to use the inverse warping to find the corresponding point in the input image. In this way, we're always going to find a value. Of course, this location might not be in a specific pixel, so we can use the nearest neighbor or interpolation, in which you can take the average of all pixels around the target location. Let's see it in an example. So we have a picture of a QR code that we want to register and we have a template that will be our destination image. We compute the warping matrix and taking the corners of the template, we will find the limits of the new image. We create an empty image that covers those limits and then we loop over the new image. For each pixel, we use the inverse warp to find the location in the picture that correspond to the pixel in the new image. We either take the neighbor or we interpolate, and then we write the value. Once that we are done, you will have a new image that is aligned to the template. Now you can crop it and read the code. This is just one example, but you can do many other things using registration. And it also can be an alternative to the Hoff transform to find shapes, as long as you can define those landmarks. Okay, in this video, we talk about homography, we review how to compute the warping matrix, and how to register images. See you in the next video.